Hello, my name is Nicholas David, and my life has been about the search for cultivation and sharing of peace. Now, this passion comes from my mother and our people, the Choctaw and Blackfoot Native tribes of the Indigenous Americas. She's always taught me to lean in and help, share a smile, share love, right? Now, I'm also a wellness coach, and I get to practice that principle with each person that steps into my vehicle. Uber, just in case you were wondering. And this is my lovely wife, Cosette. And my path has been about the discovery of love. Not as a destination, but as a journey of heartbreak, healing, faith, and a mission for caring for the young and the vulnerable. Today, I am with the Love, Unity, and Values Institute, also the Love Institute. And what makes our work unique is that we focus on a social-emotional learning approach to college and career readiness for young men and women of color who have experienced trauma. See, separately, we're quite decadent. Peanut butter and jelly, almost, if you will. Love and peace. But together, we form a foundation that serves as the basis for us to be able to help heal our communities, to inspire others, and give a little kick to life. You know what I mean? Sweetie, you know what, I gotta tell you, one of my favorite things about you is the way you approach a challenge as if you're in the eye of the tornado. Tell them how you do that. Well, it started seven years ago. I was in the spirits industry and I didn't find it fulfilling anymore. I didn't want to be a part of promoting alcohol. Mm -hmm. So I took a trip out to California. I was on Santa Monica Pier. And out of the mist come two guys riding on bicycles, fully loaded. I'm, I immediately asked, where are you guys going? They said, around the world. And it just blew my mind. I, I was so inspired. I came back to Chicago, purchased a bicycle, and cycled from Chicago to Atlanta for charity. It became my cycle of peace. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I'm able to bring those principles to the Uber platform. Every time I have somebody hop in that ride with me, it's amazing. I love it. My journey was a little bit different. It started the day I graduated from college. Mom and Dad had planned a wonderful party for me, and I was basking in the accolades of the day. I mean, I was surrounded by family and friends, and I was thinking about my future, what happened next. And then the doorbell rings, and an unexpected visitor entered the room. When we locked eyes, a flood of memories came back. And I had realized that I was running away from a truth that had been buried in my subconscious. I was sexually assaulted at age seven. The days ahead were difficult. Uh, and for my parents, um, learning this at this time was really challenging for them because they had worked so hard to provide a life for my brother and me where we could do anything with our life. But they became my best champions and helped me to face every giant that I had to encounter. And so it took years, but I faced depression, suicide, um, anxiety, anger, you name it. And then I learned how to accept what had happened to me and to forgive my offender. That's when the rainbow came. And I didn't realize it, but I had developed a capacity to love myself and others like never before. And I think that's why I'm so committed to helping so many young people. That's true peace. Mm. You see, I approach ride sharing as a unique opportunity, almost a social experiment, to be able to turn someone's day around. Once like the challenges that you mentioned, after 14,000 rides, I'm sure you can imagine the amount of challenges I've come across. In fact, I can remember one Saturday night, had a couple stepping into the vehicle, they were inebriated, asked them to please pour out your beverages, adult beverages. Well, the young lady complied. The young man 
sat directly behind me, looked at me in the rearview mirror and said, shut your mouth, get me to where I need to go, or I'll take you out. Mm. Thank God I follow a path of peace. <laughs> I had one or two options, to return the fire or become the opposite. I looked him right back in his eyes and said, would you like a mint? What music preference do you prefer? Hmm. I immediately watched the fire become extinguished. The energy that was being projected towards me was immediately vaporized. Mm -hmm. I made it home that night. You know, I had a young person that wasn't so lucky. Mm -hmm. You know, in the Career Academy, it's a 10-week program. And so at the end, right, this, the young people are better prepared for the workforce. Yes. Well, on this particular Saturday, um, we had taken them shopping, and um, it was shopping for interview attire. And at the end of the day, we came back to the Institute, and we completed with the question, what's your takeaway? And there were various answers that were shared. And then Andre said, proper preparation prevents poor performance. I thought that was perfect. I really, I was so inspired because in that moment I realized that an environment of love was making that kind of difference for him. And he was preparing to start a new job on Monday. Um, and so he was so inspired, he even did a Facebook post that says, I get it. And he was dressed in the outfit that we had just purchased for him. But Andre didn't make it to uh, his Monday job. He was gunned down as he was leaving the convenience store. First person I ever uh, lost. And you know what? It was a beef about a girl, of all things, right? And when Nick and I went to the funeral, we had discovered that he wasn't in foster care because he didn't have parents. He was in foster care because he was fighting with his dad and he couldn't get along with him. And I had to watch this broken man lay his namesake to rest. And I remember how you comforted him at the funeral with words of peace. It made such a difference. I remember that. And that same energy was returned to me in the form of a ride share with a young Nigerian sister. I was picking her up from her shop. Mm -hmm. I asked the question I asked everyone who enters the vehicle was, how you doing? Nick? music preference? Mm -hmm. Well, she let me know she was celebrating an anniversary. And I said, what's the anniversary? She said, today my two young children were killed while I was on the phone by my ex-husband, mm -hmm. who was bitter about the divorce. Oh, wow. At that moment, I had no words. At that moment, she began to share with me her path to peace and how she was able to resonate such strength. It inspired me. Mm -hmm. It reminded me that we truly are each other's medicines, and she actually poured into me with her demonstration of strength. <laughs> wow. You know, I, um, I'm often humbled by the stories of courage that my young people share. You see, at the foundation of the work that we do is restorative justice. And restorative justice is a set of practices that are designed to heal through the power of listening. One, one Wednesday, I was sitting with a group of 12 young people, and they were talking about how their life had changed over that last 18 months. Their stories were heartbreaking, and they were grasping for something. And what I heard is after experiencing the COVID-19 pandemic and so many social justice tensions, they were craving for implementations that really focused on wellness and healing. I asked myself the question, how can we take our work from impacting hundreds to transforming thousands? It was in that moment the Parade of Hearts was born, a public art with a purpose. Community members get a chance to engage in courageous conversations around healing and envision a new, new normal. And that artistic expression ends up on a five-foot fiberglass heart in the community. What an opportunity. And perhaps, 
you know, when people see these structures around Chicago, maybe they'll be inspired to choose love over hate. And maybe we could, as a community, begin to help to heal our young people, creating a legacy of love. You know, that resonates because when we speak about leaving that legacy, it reminds me of January the 9th. Mm, yeah. It was a day that tra tragedy touched our very doorsteps. Yeah. Where the lessons and the practices that we seek to implement were actually put to the direct test. So you see, our doorman was shot mm -hmm. by a crazed gunman, killed literally at the door I just passed through 20 minutes prior. Mm. And our 75-year-old neighbor was also grazed in the head with a bullet. It was at this moment that we had to call a prayer circle for our entire build, building to be able to reconcile the challenge and tragedy that literally had visited our doorsteps. Mm -hmm. It was at that moment that we had a chance to actually implement love mm -hmm. and peace. Yeah. And so we hope this narrative inspires you to smile at someone you've never met before. Hold the door open for a young lady and her children. Give a power sign to somebody who looks like they need a little bit of extra support. And with that, we humbly leave you with love. Love. And peace.